Hello, welcome to Moonflake, which is student couples in the dev channel and hopefully a game studio in the future. I'm Ayberg. And I'm Barfin. In our first video, we wanted to show you our first game, humble platformer game named Collector's Horseman. Collector's Horseman will be our final project for Harvard's Introduction to Computer Science course CS50X. But before diving into it, who are we? We are engineering students who are really passionate about learning and creating. I started learning programming with web development during my preparation class, but then I realized game development is the way for me, because I thought I love games and creating them would be awesome as well. We took CS50 to make a clean start to programming and learn the basics, so we could go forward in the game development later. After finishing the course, we've met with Love2D, open source, lightweight game engine that doesn't have any graphical user interface. Since we had to use this engine to create our final project, I started learning it. So we started our first official project. At that time, I didn't make any games other than a couple of simple games and didn't know anything about game engines. CS50's game development course and Cheap Pollution's tutorial helped a lot for understanding the basics and logic love to the uses. I started preparations for this game early, just like iBag. To start a little bit from the beginning, I was introduced to coding for the first time when I was in the preparatory class of industrial engineering. I grabbed the simple logic of coding by making small games on scratch. When we decided to go forward on game development, I realized I was interested in pixel art in some games like Stardew Valley, especially the cute ones. I started to experiment with basic things first on the mobile apps then on the websites like Pixelite. I have been learning and making Pixelite regularly for about 3 months now using Sprite. I am very eager to improve myself and learn more. The fact that we use my pixel arts in our game also makes me happy. Adam C. Hunas Pixel Art class helped me a lot along the way. I joined the Pixel Daily Tag on Twitter studied other games pixel art style on edge. We agreed on that we want to create a platformer game with simple mechanics since this would be one of the easiest for beginners. After working on the basics, ideas and a simple story, I needed a tutorial to explain me the platformer mechanics in Love2D and this dude was here for me. His tutorial series took me a long way and taught me about things I don't know anything about like advanced moving mechanics, camera, tiles, a great map editing tool, and much more. After creating basic platformer game with Jeepers videos and free assets I found on Edge, I started adding our own features to the game. NPCs will talk when you are near them, enemies will chase you if you are near them, very simple attack feature to our character. I created a simple level to be able to check these features in a real game. I want to tell a story now. You know, laptop's performance decreases when they are not plugged in. One day, when there is a power outage, I ran our game and the character was able to jump much more than it should. The reason for that is the delta time, which is the time it took to refresh the frame. So, engine refreshes the frame in different time spans when FPS changes. I kinda solved that by changing jump amount according to the delta time, but sometimes it fails. This kind of problems may be really easy to solve in other engines, but in Love2D it's not, at least for a beginner like me. So I can't really wait to switch to Unity after this project. After I back design our main character and goblin enemy, I started working on turning these characters into pixel art. Creating the sprite was pretty easy, but the animating the sprite was really challenging. Checking other sprite sheets and adapt the motions into our surprise made things easier since this was the first time I'm working on animations. While I think these two characters look good enough to put into a game, I realize there is no consistency between them. While Goblin had black outline, Swordsman hadn't. I recreated them with consistency rule in my mind and the most important animations were ready. I applied the same process with Ty set to create this one. I drew a stone for our game, but when we added to the game, we realized that isn't consistent too. While making pixel art for a game, 
I learned drawing good is not enough to use it in game. I would say that being consistent was the most difficult thing for me. But now the art side of the game is about to be completed. When I implemented Perfin's pixel art into our game, it felt much better because now everything in our game is our creation. If you need to talk about level design and the goal in the game, I am thinking of a level where you need to collect some objects and kill enemies to move to the next level. But I realized the player can jump above the enemies and finish the level without needing to kill them. So I need to find a way to avoid that playstyle without changing game so much. Maybe goblins can drop collectible items too but this will be in the next devlog. As I said earlier, we don't want to scale this game up so much, and our goal is to create simple, playable game to submit as a final project. So there is no need to fancy mechanics or unique level design. I'm pretty happy with the game's current state. I will be adding more levels and NPC dialogues to the game. And I will be working on a Pelex background, collectible objects and graphical interface. I think that's it for this episode. We look forward to hear ideas and suggestions on comment section and our Discord. If you want to follow our progress, you can subscribe to our channel and follow us on Twitter. Also, we have a Patreon for great people who want to support two passionate students through their game dev journey. See, See you next, next time! time.